Hi there, welcome back to my channel. My name is Melinda Lyons. I'm a psychic medium, a near-death experiencer, a demonologist, and an astral exorcist. Welcome back to my channel, Last Frontier Medium, where I help people for free with a small scheduling fee for paranormal activity. Oh my god, that just came out super easy. I think that's going to be my new slogan from now on. <laughs> My new opening. That just came out perfect. I rhymed. Who knew? Welcome back to my channel. If you've seen me before, welcome back. If you're new, welcome. And I hope you enjoy this information. I hope you enjoy this channel today because we're going to talk about something very special. About a very special being that I've been very much in touch with, that I've absolutely adored since the moment I came face to face with him. Archangel Michael. So today we're going to talk about Archangel Michael and what it's like to work with him and signs to know that he is around. There are many channels that talk about signs of angels and archangels, especially Archangel Michael. But in this channel, I'm going to talk about my own personal experiences of what it's like when I met him and more importantly, um, how and what to expect when you do work with him if you choose to and why he's so beneficial for you. Working with archangels is truly one of the most special in experiences you will ever have because they are so divine. They are so pure in energy. They are so pure in love. They are so pure in light. They have the most benevolent energy I've ever been blessed to experience. I've been around so many other angels in my in my time, but Archangel Michael still to this very day is one I kind of have on a pedestal. Now everyone has a very favorite angel. A lot of people do. Some people favor Archangel Gabriel, who is absolutely wonderful, Uriel, Metatron, and many others out there. But Archangel Michael is a one that I definitely favor the most, specifically because he helps me in spiritual warfare when I help my clients through paranormal advisory sessions. Spiritual warfare is a lot like what people believe it is or assume it is. Spiritual warfare is a spiritual battle in the other realms and also within the consciousness of the humans that are dealing with spiritual warfare of demons and devils and other negative vibrational forces that are very detrimental to the human soul, that are very detrimental to the consciousness of the source of oneness, which is love. And Archangel Michael, when you get to meet him, for me personally, when I met him, it was definitely not a plan, but I had been thinking about him for a long time. And when I did get to meet him, it was about two, three years ago around that. And he was absolutely phenomenal. He took my breath away. He was such a beautiful entity. The second you see him, girls, you will fall in love. <laughs> He's absolutely handsome. He's so handsome. He's so strikingly gorgeous. But it's not just his beauty on the outside. It's his beauty on the inside. He is such a gentle, strong, entity. He's such a beautiful man. And I say man even though he's an angel, but he really is very manly. Uh, one thing I did learn about him is his zodiac sign is Taurus. Now I may be incorrect, uh, some people may disagree, but that's what I've discovered about him. Also the color that he most commonly appears in and wears is red and gold. He really does favor these colors the most. He does wear other colors, but primarily he's always in red. And again, other websites or other psychics or other people that meet uh, Archangel Michael may say different, but this is how I've always seen him all the time. When he appears, he will also be very golden and very glistening. I mean, like sun-kissed skin, like absolutely brilliant skin that it ridiculous like I felt like a dude when I came into contact with him because he's so beautiful I mean he will literally sparkle and shimmer but when you do get to encounter him you'll also notice he has very deep very powerfully blue eyes and very blonde hair but his blonde is not like a white blonde it's a golden blonde and it's very beautiful archangels like Michael specifically are 
in certain ranks in angelology. Now, I'm still learning about angelology, but what I do know is that there are angels above archangels, and so he still takes orders from other angels that are even higher than him. But archangels are specifically uh, dedicated to helping humankind uh, to, to maintain the spiritual balance of positive energies and to keep the negative entities out of our realm of our of our portion of our situation of our system of the universe and so when you encounter michael you will feel a very strong powerful energy frequency a very strong presence but it's not something that is going to be intimidating. He is quite intimidating. I will say that he is very intimidating. For me, when I'm around him, he feels very uh, non-judgmental, very kind, very sweet, very gentle. He's a very gentle soul, but do not cross him. <laughs> I've done it a few times. Um, that's me though, because there's certain things that I think are kind of hypocritical. That's just me though. And we've gotten into arguments a few about a few things, but you know, differences aside, I know that sounds ridiculous. Like some people may think, how could you argue with an angel? I just have difference of opinion, and I'm very opinionated. Um, but me as a star seed, I just see things differently. Whereas angels have a very, very strict, uh, benevolent ruling they have a very very strict ruling and actually one of their biggest rules that i don't agree with one of their biggest rules in angelology that i've learned with angels is that even if they see someone committing something bad they won't tell anyone about it and this is something that i find very very messed up like that's just me though because as a human as a star seed i think differently and to me it's like well if you're seeing someone like rape somebody uh don't you think you should tell a person who needs to know that or you know i'm not talking about gossip i'm talking about the level of justice and speaking up for people my level of mentality in that justice is very very different and i'm very vocal about that and me and michael and i we've had uh disputes about this we've had uh we've had arguments about it but it's usually me having the argument with him and to me it's just that's one thing that i don't agree with but you know that's how they've always worked and it, the reason why their rule is this way is because they don't believe in ever meddling in a uh, human's business so they stay out of our turmoil so that's the one thing that a lot of people wonder is why is it when we ask for angels to help us or why is it bad things always happen and nothing ever seems to be stopped about it why where is god or where are the angels for that that's the reason why is because they let humans uh discover the situations on their own and they don't metal that's the word i'm looking for they don't meddle in human issues the only time they will and I've learned this from Michael, is unless you ask formally. And when I say formally, I mean from the heart. You have to be very organic. You have to be very honest and, and uh, just humble in asking for help and guidance or even for protection. And Michael is wonderful for that. So even despite you know me having my little tussle argument with him, we're still fine. You know, we've had our arguments. I apologized. Of course I did. It's Michael. But at the same time, that is something that I'm learning about angels as well. And that's something that as a spiritual person, as my, of myself, as myself, you know, we learn about the differences and it, it's a learning experience. It helps me to understand like, okay, they have a different ruling. They have a different um, set of cultural beliefs in a way, if you want to make it that way. But that doesn't ne necessarily mean it's wrong or negligent of humanity. It's just how they do things. And I think that one of the other reasons why they do that is because they know that humans are responsible for themselves. And so even though they help humans, and they will help if they need to they also have a strong belief that 
we must also learn how to rescue ourselves at the same time or take care of ourselves and be responsible of our own existence and it's hard to stomach that when you really think about it but it really is true at the same time but it really is true and it's it couldn't be more uh, closer to the truth on just understanding the dynamics of how how growth really is for every level of existence. There are many, many experiences I've had with Michael. I work with him consistently. I work and I see him all the time. I actually have been taking a break from Michael, especially after that, but um, but we're, we're fine though. We're not arguing or, or there's no awkwardness in a way. So we still work together and I still respect him. I still love and adore him and he's still on a pedestal to me so I still like feel bad about that. But the thing is though is that that's one trait about Michael that you will learn about him is that he doesn't hold grudges and he's not the type to um, go oh well you know that that's how you were and that's how you were. He doesn't hold a grudge. He forgives and lets it go. He never, I mean, he even in his mind, in the angels of minds of angels, they don't see a reason to have to forgive because there's nothing to forgive because they understand that we think differently. They understand that we act differently, that we are raised differently, that we go through different experiences, different traumas, different moments. And for me, when it came to working with Michael, I really got to learn more about my self as a human being and judging myself less. And one of the other things that I really love about Michael that I have learned about him is that he absolutely has a big soft spot for beings that really care about humanity. Um, and that's something that I learned about with him when I was with him, when I was working with him, and I still work with him. This is my experience with Michael, and he was absolutely phenomenal with me. He, And when I say phenomenal, I mean he was a powerhouse. He was a force to be reckoned with. He is an entity that you do not want to cross. And when I say that, I mean as far as demons or devils. He knows how to banish those entities out without an issue. I've seen him do it firsthand. I've witnessed it many times. And that's something that I really admired about him. And that was why I was so drawn to him because of the fact of how confident he was and how courageous he is all the time. I mean, I've never seen him really get scared. Angels still do get scared. They can. They can be afraid for their loved ones. They can be afraid for those that they care about. And Michael definitely can be fearful of, oh my gosh, I don't want this person to get hurt. But they don't act like they're going to start freaking out and crying. They will react and respond to that danger or that threat without hesitation. So that's the fear is the fear. The fear is a healthy fear. It's a reaction fear. It's it's a response fear based on the flight mode instead of fright mode. So he reacts in a very um, positive way that's beneficial for you. And you would have no issue in feeling protected by Michael without a doubt. I have no doubt in my mind that Michael is the number one entity I would trust in protection. So anytime that I feel insecure in safety, if I'm worried about a devil, if I'm worried about a demon, I will call on to Michael right away. Or there's other entities that I trust, if I'm working with them currently, I will call into them too. But Archangel Michael, as far as working with him, he is very beneficial in helping you to find confidence in yourself, especially in spiritual warfare or in protection. But the other thing that really is uh, really good about Michael is that he's a wonderful friend. Uh, he will laugh with you and spend time with you. Even when I was working on my candle line for Sunny Candles, he actually would spend time with me during the day in my home and I would actually project and then I would be spending time with him. Puts his whole heart and soul into everything he cares about and to anyone he cares about. When it comes down to Michael, you may be wondering how can you contact him? You don't have to be uh, contacting him in a formal Christian way or in a Catholic view, you can just call out his name and ask him honestly, ask him respectfully and ask him humbly that you need help with whatever it is that you need help on. 
And if you're wanting uh, guidance and protection, if you're wanting guidance in how to protect yourself and learn that for yourself, or if you're wanting to be able to be a demonologist like myself and you want to help people in spiritual warfare, then Michael would be an absolute perfect person to match you with with um, in that field because Michael knows all the connections. So he know. I mean, they all do, but. Um, he knows what to do because he's very well versed in demonology, demons, devils, low vibrational spirits. He knows literally everything. But that's what I really appreciate about him is because if you have questions about those things, you can ask him and he will guide you. People may be wondering too, like how do you know if Michael is around? Like if you're not able to astral project and you can't actually see him but you want to know if you can sense him can you feel him what are the signs to know if michael's around there are many signs and one of the most common signs is numerology numbers so if you're getting 333 1111 444 if you're seeing that a lot after you've contacted him and reached out to him be rest assured that is michael giving you a sign to look at the clock at that exact moment that he is there with you the other sign too is um, getting a hot flash, <laughs> unless it's just me, but um, I always get a hot flash whenever Michael's around, but then again, that also only happens typically if you're attracted to a certain entity. So it really, again, it depends. But if that's the case for you, then that also might be the reason and might be a sign for you to pay attention to. Another sign that I also really like to keep in mind are seeing his name everywhere. If you're seeing Michael, if you hear a person and call out Michael like out in a store or whatever if you read the name Michael on a website consistently or if maybe um, he pops up or if you happen to see his picture or whatever it is pay close attention to those random coincidences because that's not a coincidence that's Michael <laughs> letting you know that he's there and I love those moments when they happen because it just makes me feel so happy knowing that oh my god yay like it, it's almost like getting a, a, a little air kiss like in the sky of of letting them know that they love you that they're there and that's always the biggest thing is they put in a lot of effort to be there for us so and also another thing too is that if you are wondering um can you feel michael's presence absolutely and one of the things about it is a higher vibrational entity like michael uh when he enters the perimeter you may get dizzy and the reason why is because of his energy is so transformative that it will actually change the frequency of the space and you will feel that wave happen and that's what makes the dizziness occur so any higher vibrational entity like shiva anubis ganesha parvati archangel michael archangel gabriel or, or any of the others, any very high vibrational entity force, that's the reason why you get dizzy when you contact these entities because they are changing the energy frequency the second they enter the room. Because that energy is so powerful that it becomes contagious and it's a, in a good way, in a very good way. But I hope that this gives you some insight into what it's like working with Michael and what to expect if you try to contact him. I absolutely recommend this. It really does make me sad when I see people on my channel or see people talk about how that they'd rather work with demons than work with angels like Archangel Michael. They have no idea what they're missing. I mean, Michael and so many other an angels like him are very humble and, and very uh, likable. The instance they enter the space, they make you feel good about yourself. The instance they are there, they make you feel so happy and so overjoyed with just knowing that that they gave you their time. Even for me as a medium, I admit there are times where I spend so much time with them that I can neglect them. And this is one of the things that we always want to take time to remember, to appreciate them and to love them because they're putting in all their time. They're, they don't have to be here. They have better things to do than to be here and help us all day. I'm sure he'd probably want to go on vacation. <laughs> I wonder if they have vacations, but if they do, I'd, <laughs> I'd want to know. But 
I just hope that this is a positive uplifting message for you that Michael is very present in the universe and he is always here for us. And if you ever feel like he isn't, just be very vocal about it and ask him to help you to know that he's there and be open to the messages because you'd be surprised how many he will send. But I wish you guys so much love and positivity. Thank you so much for watching this video and I hope you got some positive insight in the information that I bestowed. But more so, I hope that this gives you more reassurance that it's a lot easier than you think. Connecting with angels like Archangel Michael doesn't require a whole lot. It doesn't require a mantra. It doesn't require a recited prayer. All they require is your love. That's all they require. They only, they don't even require that. They just, all they require is that you are willing to work with them and that you have an honest, genuine, humble attitude towards them and that, and just respect them. And that's, that's all they ask for. But also it's because they, they bust their ass. They deserve it. I'm going to end it here. I wish you guys love and light. Thank you so much for watching this video and liking and subscribing if you did, because I can't get a subscriber to save my life. I've been at 43,000 subscribers for what it feels like forever. <laughs> and it would be nice to get to 50 here very, very soon. I would like to, that would be so great, but I wish you guys so much love and positivity. Thank you so much for watching. <laughs> Bye guys.